This is Irene Woods. Today we're going to be working on the support video for these slippers. They have been on my website since 1997 and before that they were part of a book called Knitting for Bazaars and Gifts. They were so old that there are no photos, no pictures at all and slippers have begun to be popular again. People are beginning to knit them again. There have been quite a few questions on how to construct them. So it was time to make this support video. I hope you find it useful. The slippers are called double thick slippers, but most of us call them Romeos because they look very much like the old men's slippers that were called Romeos. When my kids were little, they called them Peter Pan shoes. So the shaping is a little bit different, and there's a lot of short rowing. And it's kind of confusing with no pictures. It is time to make a support video for it. I've cast on 20 stitches with waist yarn, knitted four rows, and then knitted one row of ravel cord. That ended me with the carriage on the left. When I was on the left, I threaded up with main color, which is this turquoise, and I've knitted one row to the right. Also, since this is the inside of the slipper, we are actually beginning at the inside of the heel. We're going to knit up to the top of the ankle in back. So I have turned the tension dial on my brother 260 down to tension 3 and 1 dot. The main tension for this yarn on this machine is tension 4. This will vary a lot with the machine that you're using and the yarn that you're using. We are now ready to begin short rowing and I'm actually going to short row seven stitches on the left and seven stitches on the right. That will be a total of 14 rows. And there will be six stitches remaining in the center when we get through with that. Make sure that the pull button on your carriage is turned on. Pull the first needle on the side next to the carriage out to hold position. Knit one row. Okay, bring one needle out to hold position on the left side. It really is easier if you put weights on. So that's what I'm going to do. Bring another stitch out to hold. And continue that until you have only six stitches remaining in work position in the center. Okay, when I bring the next needle out to hold, there will be six needles left. Two, four, six. Now, before knitting the next row, turn the tension dial back up to four and return this first needle on the side away from the carriage to upper work position and that's approximately halfway back on the needle bit. We're going to return one stitch to work position on the side away from the carriage every row until all 20 needles are back in work.
now we're going to immediately short row down to six needles and back out again until all the needles are back in work. So as you can see, this needle's just back halfway on the bed. But before I knit across, I'm going to bring one out to hold on the right side. Short row down to six and back out again. Do keep moving these weights up. Alright, we have six remaining in work. Before I knit the next row, I'm going to return the first stitch away from the carriage back to upper work position. We're now ready to begin working on the part of the foot that is between the heel and the toe. I'm going to knit the largest lady's size, and that means I need to knit 32 rows. At this point, I will turn on the row counter. The row counter is set to zero. I'm going to knit 32 rows. to short row down to four stitches for the toe and then back out again.
Okay, I forgot to push this stitch back to upper work position. So before I begin to work back out, I need to manually knit it. That's because I forgot to push it back. Okay, push back the needle on the side away from the carriage and knit one row. And repeat that until all of these needles are back in work position. We're going to begin the sew as you go section. And it's a little hard to determine where to begin picking up stitches. So I use little pins. These are commonly called gourd pins. I got these from Amazon. They're readily available and they're not terribly expensive. But um, safety pins will work just fine. Just some way to mark this. Okay, we need to find the first loop stitch. As you look at the side of a piece of knitted fabric, you're going to see what appears to be a loop and a knot, a loop and a knot, a loop and a knot. We're going to use the loop stitches, those elongated ones. And just so that I can get started correctly, I'm going to mark the first ones. Now these pins are so thin, the carriage will go across without any problem. So they can just stay in there. We're going to hang the stitch away from the carriage on the side opposite the carriage. I'm going to pick up this first loop stitch, that's the one that the pin's going through, and put it on the end needle. Now, like I said, these pins are so thin the carriage will go across with no problem. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. If you'll notice, I'm picking up both stitches coming into the stitch from the outside or from the left side. It probably doesn't matter that drastically, but for me they're a little bit neater. The seam's a little bit neater if I pick up both edge stitches that way. Now this is where it can be a little bit confusing. We need to go for the next loop that is below this pin. And that would be this one right here. Once you get two or three rows on, it's much easier to determine where you, oops, where you need to get these stitches. I was actually trying to hang that on a gate peg. I can't believe that. And I'm through the pin. This has been one of those days. I was working on a sample a little earlier and sewing off a bind off with a yarn needle and I got the yarn needle stuck in a needle on the machine. And I had a terrible time getting it out again. Some days everything just seems to go fine, and then some days anything that can go wrong will. Okay, we're ready to knit a row. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Let me see where this pin is. We need to find the next long loop, which isn't terribly long, but this is the knot. See this little thing here? And then this is the loop. So this is what we need to take. And I'm going to remove one of those weights. There's actually a little too much there. 
Okay, knit a row. Now we're looking for the next loop, the next long stitch. And put that on the end needle. It might be easier to do it this way. And we're just going to repeat this until we get all the way back up to 